Well, in recent days, we've been remembering, as we do every year, the tragedy of Aberfan. It's now more than half a century since tip number seven, flooded by heavy rains, collapsed, engulfing part of the village, including the junior school. Well, in February of this year, South Wales suffered some of the worst flooding in decades, but already there are fears that that less lethal tragedy is now being forgotten. This week we saw a review into how Natural Resources Wales responded to those floods, concluding that at some points it was stretched beyond its capacity. Meanwhile, eight months on, some of the people who suffered in those floods are still waiting to return home or are living in homes where work is unfinished. Uh, well, Leanne Wood is the Plaid Cymru MS for the Ronda. Um, Barada, Leanne, good morning. Good Barada, Vaughan. Um, <laughs> I, I was watching television, I think it was Channel 4 News the other night, and uh, some of the stories of what people are still suffering after the floods are, are, are heartbreaking. Why is it taking so long to get this sorted? Well, it's been difficult. That's probably a massive understatement, to say the least. Um, as you've said, many were out of their homes waiting for work to be done, and then COVID hit, and that put everything uh, on hold. And, of course, now we're facing a, a rainy autumn and winter, and very little substantial has changed, uh, and people are acutely aware that, as a result of climate change, these weather events are going to become more frequent. So it's um, difficult to it's not difficult to see why people are very uh, anxious and that's on top of all the worries about jobs and health that uh, come with the covid pandemic and of uh, course and those floods are still happening aren't they i mean we, we're talking about stuff that happened in february but there have been houses that have been flooded far more recently than that Yes, there were homes in Triochi um, flooded recently. I had um, someone yesterday contact me from a strad where the storm drains were, were blocked. Unfortunately, we were able to get through the, the councillors, um, uh, council workers there to, to unblock the drains straight away. I mean, in fairness, you know, the, the response seems to be quite um, uh, rapid at the moment and, and quite quick when, when these weather events do happen. But that does doesn't really provide for peace of mind for people because um, whenever it rains heavily now people are, are worried that that they'll be flooded again and you know understandably because of what happened last week with the NRW report and the lack of answers and the lack of solutions uh, proposed there people are angry now uh, as well and you know I never thought for one minute that um, the answers and solutions that we needed would be provided by the various organizations who were basically charged with investigating themselves um, that's why we've in Plaid Cymru we've called for a, an independent inquiry to look at this and and that's something we need to to really ramp up the support for now and um, it's not acceptable really that there are many people who were opposed to having an independent inquiry and, and, and I really think that needs to change uh, people uh, all what, need to pull together now uh, What would an independent inquiry achieve because it, it seems to me that the problem is pretty clear, we have a changing climate we have a geography in, in, in the South Wales valleys of very short, fast uh, filling rivers with houses built very close to the banks. Uh, I mean, the problem is, 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 is totally clear, isn't it? The difficulty is how you solve it. What is the option? Allowing those homes to be flooded time and time again and eventually giving them up and allowing the valley to be flooded? I mean, we have to uh, take... Um, account of climate change. There, there are big changes ahead of us. We've started to see a little glimpse of what that might look like, I think. Um, and it just means we need to change the whole way we do everything. I mean, the fact that NRW had cut trees down from the mountain and in their report basically said that that didn't really have any impact um, on the floods when, you know, we were in Pentra and and and, Azir and, and Porth seeing the debris in people's uh, front gardens, you know. So it, it, it was obvious that that, that um, had some sort of impact. What so so was the report a, a whitewash? Is that what you're saying? Well, what we need is is 
someone, somebody, some organisation or a collection of organisations to, to take some sort of responsibility and accept that big things need to change. Now, NRW were candid in their report when they said that they were underfunded and that meant that the investment that is needed for infrastructure is not within their remit at the moment. Well, that's something that clearly needs to change. The Welsh Government needs to th- give serious consideration to how much they've cut back the NRW budget over many years and, and that budget needs to increase because we know that climate change is going to make these things much much worse and more people are going to be become affected over time uh, unless uh, this investment is put in we need bigger drainage uh, is possibly one of of the solutions uh, i'm no expert and this is why we need to have independent experts uh, looking at this and also listening to the people who are affected there are people who've collected masses of video evidence photographs and they've not been listened to at all in this process so far the Section 19 process, which the, the Council is, is undertaking, is a technical process. It's not listening uh, to people's voices at all. So an independent inquiry will in- enable people to be heard, will enable that expertise that's in the local community to be taken uh, account of. But it's only through this independent inquiry I think we're going to get those answers. And that's why we need everybody to get behind and unite behind this. Now, we've shown what we can do when all local politicians unite together. We've overturned the decision on the A&E in the Royal Glamorgan Hospital, for example, by pulling together. We need to pull together now to get those answers and those solutions for those people who really deserve them. Um, I I mentioned at the beginning Abervan, And, of course, Mm. uh, there is a question surrounding the remaining coal tips that were that were judge safe back in the uh, the seventies and the eighties mm. post post Aberfan, but in a changing climate may not be. Mm. Um, the ownership of some of them is uncertain. There's the role of the coal authority comes into it. Uh, 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 NRW, um, are you satisfied with what's being done about the remaining coal waste tips around the South Wales valleys? Well, I'm satisfied in the sense that they've been looked at and that um, the governments in both Cardiff Bay and Westminster um, and uh, local government appear to be working together to try to make sure that we've got assurances uh, that they're safe. Um, But again, it's down to investment. I saw a photograph just this week of Penagraig, where I live, and right behind where our houses are now was a huge um, coal tip. It's flattened now and a school is on the site. But that wasn't flattened until the the mid-1970s and I assume that was flattened as part of the programme that arose uh, as a result of Abavan. But you're right, I mean, these things don't remain safe forever and when conditions in the environment change like they are uh, changing then we need to be very very vigilant it's not just a tile stone tip that was affected there's been reported movement in in other areas as well and people you know given <laughs> the memories from Abavan, which even though it happened before i was born it's almost kind of seared into our um, memories here in the valleys that you know we we absolutely will do everything that we possibly can to avoid a tragedy like that happening again. That one should never have happened. So there's there's absolutely no way we're going to uh, allow another one to. Leanne Wood, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Leanne Wood, who's the MS uh, for the Ronda.